Yes? Yes? Sweet mother of double jeopardy backstroking and butterscotch. We're on our way. Who was it? The Girl Scouts lawyers again? That was the commissioner. You'll never guess which unduly famous TV personality made the most wanted criminals list this week. Phyllis Diller? Gavin McCloud? Wink Martindale? Close. Myra Stump, the darling hawk of daytime talk. Myra? As in America's mom? The woman who told Tom Hanks to get a haircut? Surely you jest. She's holding her audience hostage and giving them valuable gifts against their collective will. I don't normally endorse the use of the word dastardly, but this is clearly dastardly, I think. We've got to drive over to the station right away, or at our earliest convenience. Great! I've been itching to bust some skulls since they canceled my so-called life. Watto! Samuel! Maximilian! What the? Oh, you're probably wondering how I know your names. Not really. Psst, it's me, Bosco. What's with the slanted soup strainer, Bosco? Bosco? <laughs> I know not that moniker. I am Lord Reginald Rumplebottom, Earl of Dukedom, the third. Sam, what language is he speaking? I'm not sure, Max, but I think it might be English. <gasps> no, really. What made you convert to British? Everybody's got an infamy, that's why. Yeah, we heard. Well, I had to get a disguise to throw them off the trail. <laughs> They'll never find me now. They wouldn't even know where to begin to look. Clever clogs. What sick forces of evil are bedeviling you this time? It's the skin bodies, man. They're after me. Skin bodies? Sounds like a pack of belligerent nudists. Oh, no. The skin bodies are like those horrible hairless cats, but ten times worse. Sure they're not a hundred times worse? Yeah. Maybe a hundred times. Maybe a million. These skin bodies, what exactly are they doing to you? They're still in my... I mean, pinching my shaving cream. Of all the things of yours they could pinch, why the shaving cream? So they can shave their bodies, of course. Of course. Not to be rude, but why isn't your fancy pants defense system stopping these skin bodies? Well, after the whole video delivery conspiracy, I figured I'd better build something to keep people from bringing stuff into my store. So? So, I needed to borrow some of the high-tech detecting parts from BTADS. Meaning nothing stopping people from taking stuff out of the store anymore. Dash it all! I knew I forgot something. Thanks, Bosco. Pip pip! Honey nut cheerio! I could use a shave. I'll say. Your five o'clock shadow goes clear to your ankles. Horse up, pig! Dog! Pig dog! 
The skin bodies rule the streets. <laughs> Blast, bugger, blinded, bollocks. The little blinded did it again. After him. I mean, tally ho! Tally ho! Where we going, Sam? <laughs> the skin buddies can't be stopped! Hey! After those rats! There they are! Let's get them! How do those laughably small wheels move so fast? You'll never catch us! The skin buddies can't be stopped! Take the wheel, little buddy. I thought you'd never ask. You can't dodge my shots forever. Watch it! The skin buddies can't be stopped! Shoot him, Sam! I'm trying, but they have good reflexes. Missed them. <laughs> the skin buddies can't be stopped! You can't dodge my shots forever. Watch us! This no thanks. Oof. Hey, the shaving cream! Okay, hold on tight, little buddy. Where are we going, Sam? The TV studio. Goody! Well, here we are, Max. The TV station with programs too old to be contemporary, too new to be retro, but consistently derivative enough to be popular. W-A-R-P. Television's so mindless, you can't help but watch. Oddly quiet in here. Mysteriously so. Well, let's find this Myra character and smack some good old-fashioned sense into her. I don't care if we smack it into her or smack it out of her, just so long as there's smacking involved. You crack me up, little buddy. Stand aside, casually attired stagehand. We're Sam and Max, freelance police. We've come to save some pathetic hostages from the clutches of... Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. Number one, I'm not a stagehand. I am the director. The director! Could a fool... Number two, we're no longer holding the auditions for animal cops with crippling mental disabilities and a lust for dance. Oh no, we're not actors. You got that right. I don't think I've ever seen worse acting in my entire life. And yes, I have seen Keanu Reeves' performance in Toast, the musical. Sam, I think my hypersensitive ego may need stroking. Don't look at me. Next? Who's next? What are you doing here, anyhow? What am I doing here? I'm holding auditions for Midtown Cowboys. What are you doing here? Midtown Cowboys? The critically panned but publicly adored sitcom about two cattle ranchers trying to make it in Midtown Manhattan? Yes, well summarized. You're hiring extras? No, I'm hiring the stars. The two main characters went on Myra a couple days ago and I haven't heard from them since. I need replacements ASAP. Sam, did you hear that? If we can pass one lousy audition, sitcom stardom will finally be ours! Rocketing to fame for the most insubstantial of reasons. That truly is the American dream. We're looking for Myra Stump, the darling hawk of- Do not mention that name in my presence. Which name, Myra or Stump? Either and or both. What's your beef with Myra? Let's just say Myra and I have creative differences. I'm creative and she isn't. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was your question? You and Myra, why the hate? Look, Myra runs her show her way, and I run every other show my way. If she doesn't want me on her set, I could care less. You mean you couldn't care less. If you could care less, then you do care some, which doesn't really... No, 
Oh, I was right. I could care less because I care even less about what you're saying right now. Oh, burn! Quiet, knucklehead. We'd like to apply for that instant stardom you promised. You want to audition? Well, if there were anybody else here, I'd tell you to forget it, but okay. All right! What do we do? I'm going to have you play a scene from Old Geller. Tell me you've seen it. I'm not into horror movies. It's the classic boy gets dog, dog gets rabies, boy shoots dog story. Max, I want you to play the boy. Yes! Boy! That is so me! And Sam, you play the dog. Oh. Okay, Sam, ready. I need you to act like you've got full-blown rabies. Understand? What's my motivation? You're a mad dog! Now, show me, rabbit. Um... Grrr. No, dig deep. You should be just... Frothing mad. Hmm. Brilliant! Now that's what I call diseased. Thank you, thank you. First off, I'd like to thank all the little people who... Zip it. Okay, Max. I just realized your dog is walking death, and you'll have to put him down for the good of society. Really? You're sad. You're despondent. You're grief-stricken. Now, show me the emotion. Uh, boo-hoo? You call that emotion? I've seen Myra show more emotion, and she ought to be declared a national Botox reserve. Grief, I said. Give me grief. Uh... <laughs> Perfect. Now, the fateful moment has arrived. Despite your immense grief, you must put your beloved companion out of his misery. Okay. Uh-oh. <gasps> <sighs> Idiot. What demonic force possessed you to do that? The demonic force called acting, Sam. You should try it sometime. Good thing I had my anti-hypnosis helmet built into my head. Or I'd have one too many holes in the head. Bravo. Bravo! Such realism. Such authenticity. I was convinced you were actually shooting him. How did you do the sound effects? You don't want to know. The search for the Midtown Cowboys is over! You're hired. Head to the set next door and we can begin filming immediately. Let's hurry, Sam. We only have 14 minutes and 55 seconds of fame left. All right, people, let's get the stage set up. The celebrity host will be here any minute. Oh, right. The crew's working on Myra. Stupid, no talent, fat face. Weren't you just? I think she just defied the laws of physics. Sorry, you'd be amazed how many times a day I have to do that. Things tend to be hectic here. Doesn't bother us a bit. Sam and Max, consummate professional actors, reporting for duty. <laughs> you said duty, Sam. I knew you guys were right for this show. Speaking of which, could you perhaps explain the show a bit? Okay, here's the drill. On Midtown Cowboys, you play a pair of cattle ranchers trying to raise a herd in an apartment in Manhattan. My Uncle Ernie did that, except it was pigs. And not in an apartment. I only see one cow. It's a small herd. You're struggling, okay? Okay. You've got this landlord, Mr. Featherly, who has a very strict no-cows policy. Devilishly inconvenient. I begin to see from whence the hilarity sprouts. Yes, Featherly is always barging in, and you try to hide the fact that you have a cow in the apartment. Lots of sight gags, usually something gross winds up happening. Simple enough? Great. Where's the script? Well, there's a slight hitch. The cow ate most of the script, so you're going to have to ad-lib the show. Ad-lib? Yes, make it up as you go. Improvise. Well, I guess our regular life has given us plenty of practice. Don't worry, you'll be working with Philo Pennyworth, who plays Featherly. He's a brilliant actor, classically trained. Globe Theater and all that. Just set him up to do something funny and he'll handle it from there. Check. Anything else? Actually, yes. We did save one line from the script, and it's really important to work it in, because it's the product placement that pays for the whole show. One of you will have to say the line. Me, me, pick me! All right, Max, your line is this. Better get the serious toothpaste. I like it already. 
We're as ready as we're ever going to be. Let's start taping the show. Okay, now remember, your landlord's at the door, and you don't want him to know you've got a cow in there. Ready? Action! They probably had it a cow. Open up in there! I know you're hiding a cow! Aha! I know you've got a... a... Well, well, well! Who's your guest, boys? This is my octogenarian uncle, Griswold, a retired chimney sweep from lower Nebraska. Now he travels the world chasing cyclones in a mobile home. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, sir. I'm something of a twister buff myself, <laughs> ever since I saw The Wizard of Oz when I was a boy. I'm sorry, what was that you said? He said, meow. Uncle Griswold thinks he's a cat. He's awful big for a cat. Just be thankful he's not in heat. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, I'm just not sure where we're going with this. Can we start again? Cut! <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. Let's have another go at that scene, shall we? See if you can squeeze in some gross-out humor this time. Ready? Action! Open up in there! I know you're Goodness, who a left cow. this lying here? Okay, now don't move. Or moo, either. Aha! I know you've got a... a well, well, well! Who's your guest, boys? This is Saint Oki Finoki, patron saint of landlords. You can tell by the rinky-dink halo. Saint of landlords? Well, maybe you can give me some help. You see, I I've got these tenants down in 2C who sublet their bathtub to the U.S. Navy, see, and... <laughs> I I'm sorry, what was that you said? St. Okefenokee pronounces his blessing upon you. You shall have many tenants who shall shower you with green and not keep cows in the apartments. And no tenants who shall shower with cows and keep you in the green apartments. And hardly any green tenants who keep cows from showering you with apartments. Um... I'm sorry, I'm just not sure where we're going with this. Can we start again? Cut! <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. Let's have another go at that scene, shall we? Don't forget to work in Max's line. Better get the serious toothpaste. Okay, action! Open up in there! I know you're hiding a cow. Goodness, who left this lying here? Okay, hey. now don't move. Or moo, either. Aha! I know you've got a... a well, well, well! Who's your guest, boys? This is one of the famous Flying Bimini Brothers, circus performers extraordinaire. We're getting some tips on how to spin plates on our heads, so we can keep all our gun hands free at parties. Oh! The circus, eh? I went to the circus once as a boy. Uh, there was a man there who had two heads. Only one of them looked like a giraffe, see? And I'm 
sorry. What was that you said? He said moves. I think he'd like you to comment on his unique brand of stationary acrobatics. His movements are so subtle, it's almost as though he's standing still. I'm sorry, I'm just not sure where we're going with this. Can we start again? Cut! <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. Let's have another go at that scene, shall we? Places, everybody. And action! <laughs> I know you're hiding a cow. Let there be light. There we go. Life of the party. Aha! I know you've got a... Well, well, well. Who's your guest, boys? Surely you recognize Abraham Lincoln, talented tap dancer and 16th president of the United States? His hat fell into a bucket of bleach this morning. My goodness, President Lincoln? I didn't even know you were still alive. You know, I had an excellent idea for the redesign of the penny I'd like to tell you about. Sorry, what was that you said? Mr. Lincoln was just reciting his latest speech, a revision of the Gettysburg Address intended for the minuscule attention spans of the modern audience. Could you repeat everything you said after Mr. Lincoln? I kind of drifted off. I'm sorry, I'm just not sure where we're going with this. Can we start again? Cut! <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. Let's have another go at that scene, shall we? See if you can squeeze in some gross-out humor this time. Ready? Action! Open up in there! I know you're hiding Let there be light. There we go. Life of the party. Aha! I know you've got a... Well, 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 who's your guest, boys? This is the Crown Prince of Upper Thrombosis, here in the U.S. on a fact-finding tour. Note his excellent ceremonial headgear. Huh, a prince? Golly gosh, I don't think I've ever met a real-life prince before. Of course, I am descended from royalty myself. On my mother's cousin's side, it was the back of the... I'm sorry, what was that you said? That's how they say goodbye in thrombosis. It's also how they say bring me a pot of scorched grasshopper thoraxes, but that's probably not what he means this time. I see. Oh, uh, well, goodbye then. I'm sorry, I'm just not sure where we're going with this. Can we start again? Cut! <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. Let's have another go at that scene, shall we? Don't forget to work in Max's line. Better get the serious toothpaste. Okay, action! Open up in there! I know Goodness, who left this cow. lying here? Let there be light. There we go. Life of the party. Aha! I know you've got a... 
Well, 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 who's your guest, boys? This is the French chef we hired to satisfy our inexplicable, insatiable craving for omelets and duck a la range. And frog's legs. I like mine extra crispy. Oh, a French chef, eh? I love French bread and, and French fries. I went to Gay Paris one time myself, you know. It was back in my army days. Nah. Say, what's this? Uh. I I'm sorry, what was that you said? He said Mugu Gai Pan. It's a French dish the chef has just made. Whoa, super. I'll try some of that. Where's the plate? I can't help but feel this is all terribly wrong somehow. Aha! Hmm, interesting. That's one word for it. Hmm, there's a familiar flavor. Fennel, maybe? Kentucky bluegrass, I think. This moo moo whatever stuff is really good. What's it called in English? Cow pie. Really? Well, that's funny. It sounds just like... Now? Now. <clears throat> Better get the serious toothpaste. Zoom in. And cut. Phew. That was comic gold. The network is going to love it. Naturally. I'll be in my dressing room refreshing my muse. Don't call me for at least an hour. Nice work, you guys. Here's a clip for your reel. Thanks. <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. Look, Max, there's the door to Myra's set. Let's get in there and liberate her literally captive audience. Sam, forget the hostages. There's somebody famous. It's Hugh Bliss. Who Bliss? No, Hugh Bliss. Inventor of prismatology? Help millions unlock the power of their personal color spectrums? Right. The stage magician turned happiness guru. Like we didn't have enough of those already. I want to meet him. Fine. But if he magically pulls another rainbow butterfly out of somebody's ear, I'm leaving. Hi, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Yeah, we know. And you are Sam and Max, freelance police. <gasps> How do you know? Do you believe in magic? Because I do. So, Hugh Bliss, what brings you to WARP? I, too, am here to meet Myra. <gasps> How do you know we came for Myra? Oh, 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 don't you see? I can read your mind. As the resident Doubting Thomas of this crime-fighting duo, I consider it my civic duty to say, prove it. Okay, think of something, anything. 6,373,411.98. Sam? Lucky guess. Was it? Think of something else. Pennies on the eyes of a dead mime. Well? I must have been silently mouthing the words. Really? Think of something else. <laughs> Hugh Bliss is a big fat charlatan. Was he right? Big deal. Everyone thinks that. Oh? Think of something else. <laughs> Enough of this ridiculous farce. Stop it. <laughs> do me, do me. Oh, oh my. And that's unspeakably depraved. Yeah, you got it. Wow, you're amazing. 
What's your business with Myra? I'm to be a guest on her show, silly. Yeah, silly. I'm spreading the word about my new book, Emetics, the handbook for multicolored happiness. Take a copy when you leave. Can you just give us the ten word summary instead? We're on a pretty tight schedule. Ten words? Oh my! How about prismatology is the answer? Unicorns are pretty and rainbows too. That's ten. What's the story on this prismatology flapdoodle? Prismatology is only the greatest intellectual, emotional, and spiritual revolution ever to grace this fair planet. Thank goodness we have someone who can give an impartial assessment. Shh! Tell us more! Join Prismatology today, and you too can experience the magic of true bliss. That goes against everything I've ever hoped for, and yet now I'm strangely attracted to the notion. Snap out of it, little buddy. We've got a case to solve. Dazzle us with a feat of ledger domain, why don't you? Okay, I'll show you the magic of prismatology in action. Pick a color, any color. Ochre, ochre! No, mauve! Burnt sienna! Uh, how about a color I've heard of, hmm? Pick a color, as long as it's red, green, or blue. It's not easy being green. Oh, but it is, with magic! Ah! I know what you're thinking. Is it real, or is it illusion? Say, Hugh Bliss, can we get a picture with you for our scrapbook of instantly forgettable memories? Splendid idea! I wish I'd thought of it. Oh, and in fact, I did. He, hence the camera. Now gather round. But how will you take the picture? By... magic! Okay! Say, chocolate-covered puppies! Chocolate-covered chocolate -covered puppies. puppies! So where's the picture, Magic Man? Oh, my! I seem to have misplaced it. Hmm, check your pockets. Maybe I left it there. Sorry to interrupt your little joy fest, but I've got a situation here. Never fear, pretty lady. Hugh Bliss is Yeah, yeah. Anyway, our game show host went on Myra hours ago, and he still hasn't come out. Think you can fill in till he gets back? Can a butterfly fly? Yes, it can. Oh, what do I do? When a contestant comes to the podium, just read him a question from the card. Then, when he gets it wrong, insult him and tell him to get off the stage. Oh, no, no. Prismatology teaches us to love everyone, no matter what. Right, just read the cards. Okay. I still love you. <sighs> We've got a contestant, people! Hit it! From somewhere deep within the bowels of WARP, it's Who's Never Going to Be a Millionaire? With special guest host, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Our first contestants are a pair of professional freelance police officers. They enjoy firing their guns randomly and running over things. Please welcome Sam and Max. Listen, Sam, they love us. Welcome. You know the rules. If you can answer even one question correctly, you'll walk away a millionaire. Start loading the armored cars, Hugh, because my brain's stuffed with enough worthless trivia to power a small Chilean village for decades. It's true. Okay, are you ready? Oh, happy day. It's an easy one. If a man sets out from the Horsehead Nebula in a spaceship traveling at thrice the speed of light and his father leaves from Rigel 2 at the same time going half the speed, how many nanoseconds will it be before time paradox causes the first man never to have been born? I'm not sure, but I'll say false. That's not really a valid answer. You lose! This is an outrage! I demand a recount! We do have a fabulous consolation prize. A copy of Emetics by me, Hugh Bliss! 
No thanks. I'm content to leave with just my burning shame and newfound sense of inadequacy. Okay! Find out which poor schmuck will be the next to blow his chance at millions right after these messages. Apparently, WARP can't afford armed guards for their game show questions. That's cheating, Sam. Good thinking. Don't get your pretty long ears in a twist, little buddy. The answers aren't on here. In life, there are no answers. Only questions. Another prismatology credo? No, I read that in a cereal box. I'm seriously deficient in riboflavin, by the way. You're seriously deficient, all right. see how you can sing and be a judge. I don't think the public would swallow that. Hey, Sam, do my eyes deceive me, or are those our formerly hypnotized former child star acquaintances, the soda poppers? Sweet jellyfish paste on a stick, you're right. What are the odds? Could we find another judge? What about one of those guys? Hmm, I don't suppose either of you would be interested in being a judge on Embarrassing Idol, the hot new show where we make uncomfortable entertainment out of people's misplaced faith in their own singing ability. Oh, me, me! I promise I'll be completely unbiased in my abuse of the contestants. Fine, fine. Take a seat. Goody! I get to sing! Welcome back to Embarrassing Idol. The judges are chomping at the bit, so say hello to our first contestant, Peepers. <clears throat> Am I blue? Who are you? Can I fly? Well, that was a bit sloppy, but I particularly liked how you hit that high note. That always impresses me. I think you'll get my vote. I'm definitely voting for you. After all, you are my brother. Very impressive. You sound almost exactly like a sick cat being dragged through rusty farm machinery. But this is a singing contest, so I think I'll have to vote for someone else. Um, is there anyone else? Not so far. Once used for apples, now used for derrieres. Can I look at these? Sure, take them. I've got them memorized. Am I blue? Who are you? Can I fly? Very impressive. Welcome to Cooking Without Looking, the cooking show for the typical bachelor kitchen, containing no fruits, vegetables, or healthy ingredients of any sort. The show where we take a random assortment of condiments and barely edible items and create a meal within minutes. Filling in for Chuck Flagon this week, these guys. Just go with it. Oh, um, hello. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Sam. It's great to be here. Not you, Buckethead. The audience. Oh! Greetings, worshipful fans! Remember, the only reason I'm on TV is because I'm better than you. We've got some furious cooking to do, so let's get right to it. What are we making, Sam? Today we're baking a cake. Let's visit our rack of ingredients and add flavoring to the flavoring pail. I'm pretty sure that's a pot, Sam. Max, let's leave the cooking to me and the eating to you. A fistful of squid tentacles. Ooh, that's my favorite western. A handful or two of buffalo chips. You really can't add too many buffalo chips. Of course, you're going to want a few dashes of hair gel. Don't worry, bachelors. As long as you use it only for cooking, no one will think you less of a man. No more than a dash of uranium pellets. They also go great in Chex Mix. 
Of course, who could forget the asbestos sprinkles? This stuff isn't just for school lunches. Real kitchens use it too. Now do we broil it, Sam? Right you are, little buddy. Into the oven it goes. And through the magic of TV cooking show time, one gorgeous, delicious cake, ready to be binged upon or shared amongst friends. Oh boy, let's take it with us. Sam! Max! How nice to see you! I don't suppose you have any candid photos of little green men feeling frisky, do you? Yes. By which I mean, huh? It's my new career! I'm a tabloid publisher specializing in the thoughtful analysis of groundbreaking news of interest to myself and others like me. What's it called? The Alien Love Triangle Times. So you're a publisher now? What happened to psychotherapy? I've always had a fascination with the suppressed and the sensual, and for telling people too much about both. Publishing the Alien Love Triangle Times is a logical extension of all my previous careers. Except maybe Vatican spokesperson. Are you doing any psychotherapy on the side? Only on space aliens. I guess that narrows your clientele quite a bit. No, not really. There's nothing like good, hard-nosed journalism. You said it. It's time to find out the real answers to the real questions. Like what did those poor cattle do to deserve that? No. What do aliens do for romance? Do they love? How do they get their otherworldly thrills? By playing slots in Kino? That'd explain why they're always seen in Nevada. We'll be back. Keep watching the supplies. Sam, this is perfect. This photo is a capstone. It succinctly summarizes over 30 years of extraterrestrial-related photographic evidence. Sybil, that photo is a hoax. Exactly. I couldn't have asked for better. Now I can print the paper. Available at newsstands now. This appears to be some sort of reproductive device. It's a mimeograph. I use it to print my tabloid. Hey, guys. Have you learned anything interesting since you started this, uh, magazine? I learned why Elvis had such an otherworldly voice. Elvis was not an alien. Sure he was. He just wore makeup to cover his emerald green skin. Frankly, Sybil, this project is disturbing, as well as distressingly intimate. 
Like seeing Stephen King getting a hot butter massage. Oh, you saw last week's issue. We'll be back. Keep watching the supplies. We're famous. Hooray! Can we begin misbehaving now? Begin? It's Sam and Max. I saw you on the telly. How do you watch TV from in there? Oh, I've got monitors you don't even know about. Let me show you something. Stand bathrobes! Ruffians! Rubbish mongers! Nope. Hello, sir. What ho, old beans? We want to buy something. Hmm, yes, hmm. Quite so, quite so. What have you got? Well, just between us. I have a most peculiar device behind the counter. What peculiar device are you so eager to pawn off on us this time? <laughs> it's the latest in Bosco Tech innovation. A delightful invention I like to call a chemical-based voice modulator. Voice modulator? What's that? I do believe it's self-explanatory. We don't really have time to explain it to ourselves. Why don't you just explain it to us? Well, it alters the frequency of your voice molecules. Very useful, very useful. We'd like that voice modulator. That will be 30 shillings. Yeah, I left our shillings in my other pants. How much in dollars? Uh, let's see, uh, 30 shillings would be about one million American dollars. A million bucks? No way are we giving out that many tickets. I think we'll have to find an entirely new revenue stream if we want that voice modulator. Oh, worth every shilling. Trust me, trust me. Nothing for us right now. Indeed. Thanks, Bosco. Toodle pip, tickety talk. Scandalous. A little ketchup is always good on a cake. Where are we going, Sam? The TV studio. Goody! Happy birthday! Red Frosty looks tasty! Excuse me. Boy, that was really... Uh, uh, really... Uh, uh-oh. Time out for number two! What the darn it? He better not be going to see Myra. Well, anyway, we can't wait. We'll just have to finish the show with only two judges. Whatever you guys agree on goes. Vote for me! Hey, can I try my pipes out on this thing? Go right ahead. Frankly, we can use all the contestants we can muster. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next contestant, Sam.
Hello, I'd like to do a little song I call... Busted Down Hound Dog Blues. <coughs> Shiny like a new mylar balloon. Thinking about the rings on the great raccoon. Road to someday, bits of me are strewn. And let's hear from our judges. Bravo! Your wobbly tenor is way better than Peeper's shrill squawking. Your stylings are quite interesting, but I noticed you never really hit a high note. Peeper's is still getting my vote. Remember, folks, on Embarrassing Idol, the decision of the judges must be unanimous. Stay tuned for more exciting action after this. And we're cut. It's okay to sing again if you want to, by the way. Could improve your chances. Hey, a perfect fit. We've got another contestant. Hit it! Welcome back. Our next contestants are these guys again. Okay, are you ready? Hmm, the question is, am I blue? No, Hugh, you're not blue. Oh dear! Oh me, oh my! That's absolutely right! Yes. Congratulations! You're a millionaire! We're rich! Filthy rich! We just went bankrupt, so we will not be back after these messages. I don't believe it. Well, this is awkward, but we don't actually have a million in cash. Sweet mother of all quiz show scandals. We'll have to give you a million dollars worth of food stamps. They're right over there. Hold on. Can you buy deep fried licorice ropes with food stamps? We'll take it. One, two, three, 174, 175, 999,999, and a million. Let's go spend it, Sam. It's burning a hole in my pocket. It's putting quite a bulge in mine. We want to buy something. Quite so! We come bearing one million American dollars. Now hand over the voice modulator. Blimey! Food stamps? Well, I suppose I must accept them. Balded Dash government conspiracy. It's hogwash! Complete card swallow! Here then is your chemical-based voice modulator. This is a helium balloon strapped to an inhaler. But it works. Trust me. Trust me. Holy chipmunk, Ari is warbling out of a souped-up 78-speed turntable. It works. Thanks, Bosco.
Where are we going, Sam? The TV studio. Goody! Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next contestant, Sam. Hello. I'd like to do a little song I call... Bottleneck on the Freeway of Doom. <coughs> Howling at that drippy old hunk of moon. Playing cocktail angst on my bassoon. All the girlies hear me, and they swoon. And let's hear from our judges. I admire your courage even more than your singing. You've still got my vote. Thanks, little buddy. You really nailed that high note. Whoa! And you're less sloppy than my brother is. You've got my vote. Hey! All of the remaining judges have agreed. We have a winner. No! Congratulations, Sam. Here's your recording contract. In Bottom Records. It's like a dream come true. Specs, I'll get you for this if it's the last thing I do. Right after I get back from Mount Rushmore. Rushmore? I'd better go after him. I just remembered. I have to feed my goldfish. Are we still taping? Uh, be sure to join us next time on Embarrassing Idol. It's polite to knock. You do know we're taping a show here. Great day in the morning. It's Myra Stump herself! Yourself. Your eyes look a little spirally. Are you feeling all right? Of course I am, sweetheart. By the way, when was the last time you brushed your teeth? And you should really be flossing. You certainly sound like your normal self. But why are you keeping everybody in there? I'm just doing what I always do. Slave and toil to put on the best show possible. It's just, after opening presents from well-wishers, I felt so compelled to make this show extra special. Can we come in and see the show? Can you? Don't you mean... Uh, may we come in and see the show? That's much better. No, we're at full capacity. The only people getting in now are famous people who are appearing on the show. Can't... may we appear as guests on your show? I excel at talking about myself! Are you famous? Perhaps. In an internet petition or there ought to be a law kind of way. Not good enough. I'll need evidence of your explosive star power. I blew up a public restroom last week. I want to see a copy of your recording contract for one thing. Well, what if we... Recording, contract, and a clip from your hit TV show. You're not anybody these days if you don't act and sing. Recording contract, TV clip. Piece of cake. No cake. I'm on a diet. But I will naturally need evidence of the latest juicy scandal you've been involved in. We have to be scandalized? Of course. What kind of show do you think this is? Are you sure you want us to answer that? Look, it's very simple. Show me a recording contract, a clip from your TV show, and some evidence of a scandal, and I'll squeeze you in. Oh, is that all? We do have a recording contract. Bin Bottom Records. Take a look. Now how about having us appear on your show? Not so fast. To get on my stage, you'll also need a clip from your own TV show as well as evidence of a good scandal. Fame is a distressingly exact mistress. There you go, dear. Although I strongly disapprove, having a mistress is an excellent start to a scandal. The public enjoys a good love triangle. As it happens, we brought a clip of our wacky hit sitcom, Midtown Cowboys. We're the stars. Hmm. Your celebrity is becoming less and less marginal all the time. 
Don't worry, Myra. We're still marginal at heart. Yes, I suspected as much. But get yourselves involved in a newsworthy scandal, and you can be guests. Actually, we graced the cover of the current edition of the Alien Love Triangle Times. How's that for a scandal? You'll have us on your show now, yes? Oh, I suppose so. If only so I can talk about America's lamentably endless fascination with depravity. Yay! Naturally, I will expect you to be on your best behavior and agree with everything I say and answer every question I have and don't interrupt and keep your elbows off the table and use your indoor voice. What about... While you're on my show, you stay in your seats at all times. You do not interrupt me when I'm talking and you treat the audience with the utmost respect, even if you become less sure with each passing year that they deserve it. Now, I'll call you on stage in a minute. Gosh, Max. Celebrity is just a never-ending set of arbitrary goals one accomplishes to appease a dismissive and distracted, if not entirely absent, authority figure. I don't know if I agree, Sam, but I've begun my decadent slide into a depraved personal hell just in case. Give her a hand, everyone! Bessie Bovine reading from her new book, The Heart Has Four Stomachs, Ruminations on a Life in Hollywood, out now in all major bookstores. This microphone is starting to spark from overuse, but that doesn't mean we're ready to pack it in. We've got the stars of the not-quite-canceled sitcom Midtown Cowboys, who also happen to be the winner and judge of TV's Embarrassing Idol. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam and Mac. Hold the hayride, little pal. That bear seems more than slightly hinky, in the mesmeric sense of the term. Shadier than a fat man's ankles. Let's take it down like ducks in a gutter. Hold it! My guests sit at that end! But that bear has got you. Sit! We'll just sit where you want us to, ma'am. Lovely. What gives, Sam? Why can't we just grab the bear? It would appear that the laws of physics are different on the set of a talk show, little buddy. We're gonna have to play along. Sam and Max, you talented, hot new celebrities who've taken the entertainment world by storm. So naturally, we all want to hear everything about your involvement in the scandal detailed in the Alien Love Triangle Times. I'd like to talk about that charming yet mildly insidious-looking bear on your desk. Can I see it? I don't know, Sam. Can you? <laughs> may I see it, please? No, you may not. And if I may say so, if there's one thing that grills my chicken, it's how our culture is in a state of modal decay. Can is not the same as may. Should is not the same as blah, blah, blah. Yuck, blah, 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 blue, blue, blue. Hopefully she'll be off on her tri-state nagging spree for a while. Blah, 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 yak, 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 bloody, 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 yakety, 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 yak, blah, blah, blah. Testing, one, two, three. Blah, blah, yak, yak, yak. Ah, yes. Where were we? I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty, scandalous affair of yours. I'd like to sing, if I may. Is that wise? Howling at that drippy old hunk of moon. Whoa! Careful there, Tiger. That was wonderful. I'm so moved I almost don't have a long hectoring screed in me. Oh no, wait! There it is! Thank goodness! Self-referential songwriting is a dangerously blah 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 yak 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 yak. Blah 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 yak 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 yak. <clears throat> ah yes. Where were we? I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty, scandalous affair of yours. There's something you should know about that picture in the Times. I'm not sure I want to know anything more. Maybe you big Hollywood types thinks it's funny to flaunt your polyplanetary pickups, but the rest of us find alien love triangles, frankly, disgusting. But the photo is not quite what it seems. How so? It doesn't tell the whole story. There's someone else involved. Someone the picture doesn't show. How shocking. Who? Bessie Bovine, our co-star on Midtown Cowboys. Oh my! Audience, 
Shall we bring her back out again? <laughs> At the risk of making the obvious comment, that was shocking! Is she breathing? A little. But the creepy teddy bear is toast. Nuts! I wanted to ask it a few questions, and maybe use it to hypnotize Katie Couric. Another glorious dream bangs its chin on the dirty pavement. On the bright side, the audience is free to go home. Oh, I was just getting warmed up. Do you think Myra will have us back on the show again soon? Um, speaking of unlikely, did you notice we just had two cases in a row involving hypnotic mind control? Complete coincidence? Yes, I think so. The cogs of the universe synchronize in ways we're not meant to see. Speaking of things we're not meant to see, there's a new restaurant at the zoo where you can eat what they feed the animals. Empty popcorn cartons and cigarette butts. And processed bread logs loaded with tranquilizers and antidepressants. Bread logs make me logy. Let's head back to the cooking show set and see if we can figure out how to make fried pork rinds. Okay, but I get the feet. <laughs>